The Sonic movies have influenced and inspired many people of this generation today. After the success of the first Sonic movie, the crew had to go all out with the sequel. With less human characters and more action-packed scenes at bigger budgets this time, the movie respected the source material with many references and easter eggs from the games. The sequel broke many box office records at the time, which influenced many great video game adaptations such as The Last of Us, HBO series, and the Mario movie. With a third movie on the way and a Knuckles TV series coming sometime this year on Paramount+, Plus, let's take a look back at Sonic 2 one year later and what the franchise is heading towards next in the near future. Since the first movie focused on characters and world building, the sequel story centered around the plot of Sonic 2, which is the video game. This involved the introduction of the Master and Karyos Emeralds, and more info on the Echidna tribe. The film tied up loose ends while also creating new storylines for the next movie. Now, I'm a little conflicted on the plot based on how much filler some scenes are in length, but the character and plot development remains fairly consistent with the story they want to tell. The pacing is dragged down a bit when it comes to certain scenes, with the wedding scene happening out of nowhere and the dance fight scene being less interesting. Despite those flaws, the film is still very enjoyable and it did make me laugh a few times when I first watched it. Sonic's character is explored further in this movie as he wants to be a hero but lacks the responsibilities of one. He doesn't understand the complexities of what it takes to make sacrifices and uses his power for fun. Sonic tries to make things better but doesn't realize what he's doing is only hurting more people. Throughout this movie, Sonic grows to protect the others since he knows that he's the only one able to stop Robotnik. Even though I do think that Knuckles' character is developed better, Sonic's character is developed thanks to Longclaw. Establishing the loss of Longclaw is hard for Sonic because she's the only one who told him about his powers in the first movie. In my opinion, I am glad that they brought Longclaw back for one scene even though she's not from the video games. Sonic's development is a bit repeated this time unfortunately, but I can say that his dynamics with Knuckles blends well. During the first fight, Sonic's confused as Knuckles tells him about the ultimate power with the owls and the echidnas. Because we know that he was just a child during the events of Longclaw's supposed death. So when he gets beaten up real hard, he loses himself with so many questions as he blindly asks what's going on. During the avalanche scene, we see that when he rescued Tails, he could have almost killed him when he put his life on the line. Tails set out to find Sonic and rescued him with the cop car, unintentionally putting his life at risk when Knuckles was chasing after him. Once Tails is knocked out, Sonic messes up and realizes that the Donut Lord or Tom was right all this time. Sonic is left with the realization that he can't do everything alone. We see that he tries to own up to his mistakes and set himself right by quoting, I couldn't just let you die. Why? Being a hero isn't about taking care of yourself. It's about taking responsibility for other people. Thus, once the final battle approaches, Sonic uses the Emerald's power to transform into Super Sonic, putting his life at stake for the safety of others, finishing his character arc for the film, and telling Tom that he still has some growing up to do. Now, the movie establishes Knuckles as a major enemy to Sonic. The audience assumes that when Knuckles mirrors Robotnik, he isn't dumbed down, just misguided and ignorant since he doesn't know much about Earth. Robotnik tricks him into thinking that Sonic is the enemy and what he's doing is a good thing. Because of this, he wants to have someone to trust as a friend, so he blindly trusts Robotnik. He doesn't question what Robotnik is really up to, which really helps him establish his sense of gullibility. Knuckles' inner emotions flesh out his character as both an advantage and disadvantage. For one thing, he keeps his emotions to himself, which can really hide how he feels towards others when Robotnik manipulates him and uses him for the Master Emerald. Another thing is that his emotions correspond to his thoughts of being alone as the last of his kind. We see that his trust issues act out as he lashes out on Sonic for getting his entire species killed, which is heartbreaking. He doesn't know what happens to his tribe, which adds more depth to his character. For many years, Knuckles toughens up as a strong warrior, which makes sense because he doesn't want to suffer the same fate as his ancestors. He really only trusts himself and views people as weak and unworthy. He views his past as a reminder of his mistakes and tries to make up for them in the end. Knuckles' trust towards Robotnik blends his character with a mix of emotions. He doesn't want to be idolized or consume power unlike Robotnik. He just wants to finally be able to see himself as a hero and friends to others. The unique take on the war between the Owls and the Echidnas comes back in the form of Sonic and Knuckles. Idris Elba brings so much emotion to Knuckles with a unique performance to the movie which is great because he is essentially the highlight. When Knuckles opens up to Sonic, he brings the topic of being alone, which both of them can relate to. They lost people they cared about that day, which helps them grow as people. Knuckles tries to get out of his shell many times, 
but we see that since Robotnik interrupted him, he doesn't get to see Sonic's side of the story. Towards the end, Knuckles learns to let go of his past and embrace who he is inside. All in all, the crew delivered Knuckles to a deeper level of relatability for modern audiences. I am having the fun! Robotnik's a character that doesn't really care about anyone. His plan is to enslave humanity and take over the multiverse. His desire for power isn't explained as much in this movie, but it is ultimately assumed that he hates humans and loves machines. Robotnik is usually seen as a main antagonist with no morals, which brings a new wave of irredeemable villains who have no sympathy for others. Jim Carrey brings an outstanding performance of his lifetime, and I'll be sad if this is the last time we see him acting. His mistreatment of Stone is reasonable, but it doesn't make him a better person since he's just a douchebag. When Robotnik finds out about the Master Emerald, he monologues at how much power the Emerald has with controlling the world. This scene goes on for so long, but establishes what Robotnik sets out to achieve with his plans of world domination. Robotnik can sometimes act as a flat character, but Jim Carrey elevates his performance this time, making him a more charming, serious, and comedic villain. His relationship with Stone is a bit toxic, which is concerning, yet it still works. Robotnik is irredeemable, but he also acts like an egotistical character. He hides his betrayal from Knuckles, yet Knuckles is so naive and ignorant about it. His character remains the same for most of the movie, shocker, I know. When he pleads for mercy, Sonic doesn't budge with his bargaining and just doesn't care. Robotnik realizes he's toast and decides to irredeem his character as he falls into the flames, possibly dying if Jim Carrey decides not to play the character anymore. The movie has really neat animation. Many shots look beautiful with the addition of places such as Hawaii and Siberia. Backgrounds like the Master Emerald Temple feel immersed with the modern aspects of the games. The CGI has greatly improved with more expressive faces and fast-paced action sequences. Most of the characters look a lot more detailed and off-putting this time around, which is very great because the first movie kind of bothered with the animation a little bit. The third act brings the best of the best with the addition of the Death Egg robot and Robotnik with the Master Emerald, which is always a nice touch because they don't always have to copy everything from the games. The crew really did go all and out on this movie since they included aspects that did not seem like they were copying the games exactly, which is what you would want to do in a video game adaptation. You shouldn't copy it. You should make your own thing and try to make it make sense. Supersonic's VFX is very good, although some scenes do look like they're being filmed behind a green screen. Fight scenes are better choreographed, like a modern Sonic game, giving the old fans and new fans what they've always wanted. The 2D scenes describing the lore with the emeralds feel immersely unique, as if like it was a cutscene from the games. The stakes are increased more with explosive action and fun visuals. There are some actually very cool concept art released with very great artwork with credits to these amazing artists on the screen above. All in all, the film delivered many intense but fun animations which ultimately brought these beloved characters we know and love to life. So we already know that the next movie is based off of Project Shadow and that's great! We know that a lot of people aren't fans of the human characters, but they play a huge role in Sonic Adventure 2. Although the gun scenes in this affect the theme of the movie, the crew establishes gun as a major driving force to the plot. Commander Walters was an underdeveloped character in the first movie, but now that we know that his character will be heavily involved in the next one, I wonder how they will handle this character going forward. If you said that gun was established after the events of the first movie, maybe he had to cover up a major incident with the government. We know that Robotnik was involved in the military back when he had hair, so it's surprising how he have never heard of Gerald Robotnik in Space Colony Arc. The Robotnik lineage is utilized well as a very dark reveal for a game that is 23 years old. A lot of people want a PG-13 rating for Sonic 3 as a dark tone, which is understandable, but it might turn a lot of general audiences off since it's a very popular kids franchise after all. Shadow, on the other hand, is a very complex character with a lot of layers and it would be interesting to see how the plot would go. At the time, Project Shadow was an interesting concept in the Sonic universe that brought the franchise to new heights with darker themes of death and destruction. Many animated movies have mature themes now, which is great because now that we know that animation is a medium, not a genre. However, I don't think they will adapt the edgy elements of the Shadow the Hedgehog game. The movie franchise needs to break the barriers of being just a kid's movie and bring in more mature themes to relate to not only children, but also adults too. Anyways, those are just my thoughts and opinions on the movie and its future as a whole. For those who disagree, tell me how you think the franchise should go in the comments. If you enjoyed this video essay, don't forget to like and subscribe if you think I deserve it and I'll see you all in the next video.